Good afternoon, Liberty family. Today is Saturday, July 4th, 2020, and it's time for my weekly segment called Finances, Affirmations, and Prayers. I'm Reverend Catherine, Associate Pastor of Liberty Community Church, where our pastors are the Reverend Doctors Ralph and Alika Galloway. We meet here every Saturday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you wanna be sure to keep up with this segment, you can follow the Liberty Community Church PCUSA Facebook page. Uh, there you will receive notifications of the broadcast. You can view prior segments and engage in our other ministry offerings. You can also now see us at the Katherine Langford YouTube channel. The link is in the comments, uh, so please subscribe today. There you can also see the edited versions of the weekly segments, okay? And in the near future, some bonus content. If you feel that this information is beneficial, please share it with your family and your friends. Okay, so today, um, over the next three sessions, we're gonna be talking about life insurance and the various products and how it can be used as a part of your overall financial strategy. And during these next three segments, I will segments, I will tell you how me and my siblings purchased life insurance for my parents and the final outcomes, okay? So first, let's review our scripture text today. It's a scripture that we've used in the past, and it's found in Genesis 41, 25 through 32. And it's really a foundational scripture for all aspects of financial literacy, okay? So it says, then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean cows came up afterwards are seven years and so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as, uh, just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all of the abundance will, of Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it was so severe. And so we've read that uh, scripture passage before, and the reason I think that it's uh, foundational is because it talks about preparing for the future, right? And so um, it's something that talks about us saving and taking care of our business while we have the means so that when we get to a time where we may not have the means, we can still be okay, all right? So let's talk about life insurance. For many, this is a difficult discussion to have. Most people don't wanna think about when they're gonna die, right? So, but an unplanned death can be a catastrophic financial event in many families, especially if the primary breadwinner of the family dies. We've said many times in our segments that we're no longer gonna have our heads in the sand about our finances and so a discussion about life insurance is no different, okay? So I've talked to people about life insurance before. I used to have a license to sell, I don't anymore. But some of the questions that they would ask me are, well, why is that even really important? Um, I think that that's just a waste of money. Um, and they would ask me like, is the insurance market, is that a racket? Uh, or why do I need life insurance? Someone asked me this, why do I need life insurance if I'm dead? Um, and then they ask questions about its affordability. And so we're going to deal with all of those things over the next three sessions, okay? But the purpose of life insurance is to uh, replace the income of the deceased person, right? So that is the purpose of it, to replace the income of the deceased person. So many people look for a benefit or a death benefit that's at least 10 times their annual salary. Okay, so that's the whole purpose of life insurance. So what is life insurance? A life insurance policy is a contract with an insurance company where you pay premium payments and in exchange, the insurance company provides a lump sum payment known as a death benefit to the beneficiaries upon the insured's death. Okay, so said a whole bunch of words, what does all that mean, right? 
Okay, so if I have a policy and the policy covers me and my life, then I am the insured, okay? Now I can own a policy and um, someone else be the insured. So for instance, if I have a policy and I own it, but my husband is the insured, then my husband's life is what is being covered, okay? And so whoever owns the policy agrees to make premium payments to the insurance company, and then upon the death of the insured, the company will pay out a lump sum payment to the beneficiaries, okay? Now, who are beneficiaries? Those are the people that receive the lump sum payment. So that's gonna be whoever the policy owner designates at, um, to receive that money. So typically it's gonna be like your spouse or your kids or any other loved ones that you have, okay? Those are the beneficiaries. So the owner of the policy decides who the beneficiaries are going to be, all right? So that's the basics of what a life insurance policy is. You pay premiums in exchange for a lump sum debt benefit, all right? Now, there are really two basic types of life insurance policies out there, okay? There's term life and whole life. Now, there's a whole bunch of different names and they have all these different policies with all these different bells and whistles, but today we're just gonna stick to the basics. Truly, there are about two, there's only two types of policies, okay? Hi, Brittany, I see you. So, let's talk about a term life policy. A term life policy provides a death benefit for a specific term or time period. So you may have a term life policy for 20 years. And so what that means is that if you die within that 20 year term or that 20 year time frame, your beneficiaries will be paid the lump sum uh, death benefit, whatever that is, okay? And then term life policies are typically more affordable than a whole life policy. All right, so that's term. Let's talk about whole life. Whole life policies are where you pay a premium for your whole life, okay? Um, or until you reach the age or the insured reaches the age of 95 or 100, okay? So with a whole life policy, this policy where you, um, it pays an agreed death benefit, just like the term life policy does. However, hey Rhonda, I see you. However, it also has a cash value benefit to it, okay? And so with that, it has a death benefit and then it has a cash value benefit. Cash accumulates in that policy. And so it's like, um, it's a life insurance policy and an investment all in one, okay? So that's the difference between term life and whole life. Now, Let's talk about the strategies that are out there for both of those types of policies, okay? So one of the strategies out there says that you need to buy a whole life policy so you won't have to ever worry about it again. Remember I said you pay the premium for your whole life? So the premium is set and um, so say it's $100, you're gonna pay that same premium for your whole life or for the whole life of the insured. Okay, it's not gonna change. And so some people like this because they don't wanna have to worry about um, the premium changing and they don't wanna ever have to worry about trying to get more insurance later because the older you are and depending on your health, it may be a little more difficult for you to get insurance, okay? So the other selling point of whole life insurance is what we just talked about, the cash value and the accumulation, okay? So people will tell you, well, hey, you can get this whole life policy for the cash value, it'll accumulate, and you can use it for like your expenses, you can use it for retirement, you can use it for college expenses, all of that kind of thing, because it's building up, right? Now for some people, a whole life policy sounds like a great idea because again, they don't want the hassle of uh, trying to get a new policy after, it, uh, after the term is over, if you have a term life policy. And um, they, they like the fact that the premium stays consistent, okay? So that's one, that's the strategy for whole life. Then you have the other strategy for term life, okay? And so the strategy for that is basically it says, buy term insurance and invest the difference. So term life insurance, as we talked about, is just that, life insurance. It pays a death benefit and that's it. Okay, 
But because whole life policies are more expensive, one string of thought is, hey, well, just buy a term life policy and invest the difference. Okay, so what is that? look like and i will add a link uh, for this example but i'll just give you the gist of it so a whole life policy might have a death benefit amount of one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. okay let's say and that may cost one hundred dollars per month but then that same person may shop around and be able to get a term life policy for 20 years and it has a death benefit of four hundred thousand dollars Okay, so they would get a higher death benefit for that term, and then it would only cost, <clears throat> I'm sorry, $400,000, yes, but it would only cost $18 per month, okay? So $125,000 worth of coverage, whole life, $100 per month, $400,000 worth of coverage, term life for 20 years, $18 a month. And so what they say is, well, buy the term policy for the more coverage for the 20 years. And um, the difference between that 18 and 100 is $82. So pay the $18 for the term life policy and invest the difference yourself. Okay, so you put that same 60, I'm sorry, $82 in an investment vehicle um, that you're aware of that, you know, typically in the market, um, you can earn about 10% um, interest uh, or return on your investment. And remember several times ago, we talked about the rule of 72 and, and how quickly your money doubles. So the same thing would apply. You would put that $82 in. And if you go, if you look at it and it's um, making 10% interest over the 20 years, um, by that time that 20 years is up, you would have $62,000. So that's not too bad, okay? So you pay that $18, invested the 82, and now at the end of that 20 year term, you have $62,000. So that's the philosophy that many people have. And the other reason that it makes sense is because typically when you have the, um, the cash value accumulating in a whole life policy, it is accumulating. They are investing it for you, but much of the money um, is spent, of that $82 is spent on fees and commissions. So at the end of that 20 years, you won't have anywhere near $62,000, okay? So that's the other strategy that um, goes along with that. The other piece though of this strategy when you're talking about uh, term life policies and buying term and investing the difference is you have to be diligent, right? You have to be intentional and, and diligent about investing that other $82. Because if you don't invest it, then you're not having the cash accumulation, right? The other theory is that you will be paying off all of your debt, that you'll be um, you know, building up your emergency fund, that you'll have a nice savings account uh, build up, and that you will be um, putting your money in other investments. So that um, at the end, you've paid off all of your debts, including your mortgage, you have all of this money saved up, so at the end of it, then you can just self-insure because you'll have enough money to take care of any funeral expenses or any expenses that may come along, which would be great, right? That's ideal. But again, you have to be diligent to do that, right? Now we are all trying to get on the path to being able to do that, but um, that's uh, how that strategy works, okay? So this, again, um, the two strategies, as you know, I'm a person who's typically a both and kind of person, right? I can see, how both would work, right? The second strategy of buying term and investing the difference is the most fiscally sound and really the, uh, the better financial plan for anyone, right? But you have to make a decision if you're going to be diligent about doing that, right? So you have to look at what your situation is, like I always say, look at what your current circumstances are and make the decision that's best for you. Because remember, life insurance policies, the coverage amount and the premiums are based on your gender, your age, and your health. And so if you get a term policy, say, and you get a term policy at 30, and now you're 50 and the term is out, if you haven't accumulated all of that money to be self-insured, then you may have to go out and get another policy. And the policies are more expensive the older you are and, uh, and the amount uh, and based on if you have any health challenges. So I hope that makes sense about the difference between the whole life strategy and the term life strategy. 
again, do what's best for you. So over the next few segments, I will have a guest here that will give us more detail about the different policies and the pros and cons of each, okay? And if you don't have life insurance, please do your research and get counsel from a life insurance professional, all right? So the other thing I want you to do is to also begin thinking about this for your family. I know it's not an easy conversation to have, right? But it is a needed conversation. Do you know what your parents or your spouse or your loved one's wishes are when they pass away? Do you know that? If they were to die today, would you suffer a financial hardship? Do they want to be buried or do they want to be cremated? Have you ever had that conversation? Maybe you need to ask yourself, well, what's the typical cost of a funeral? And do you have the funds, if you're not the one who needs to pay for the funeral, but you have to travel to get to a funeral, do you have the funds to be able to even travel to a funeral of a, uh, a close loved one? <clears throat> Excuse me, if there's a policy, so say you know your mom or your dad or your husband or whatever has a policy, do you know what the coverage amount is? Is it enough? And do you know where it is? If they die, can you put your hands on it to be able to do what you need to do? These are all the questions that I want you to begin to think about today and over the next three segments, okay? Because these are all questions that we have to answer for ourselves. So I told you at the beginning that I was gonna talk to you about how me and my siblings bought uh, insurance and why we bought life insurance for my parents. So my mom was one of 10 kids, and in the early 90s, she had, she was number seven of 10, and she had three of her older sisters die within eight months of each other. And they were fairly young. They were like in their late 50s, early to mid 60s, okay? And so, <coughs> excuse me, in all of those cases, her siblings' families had the financial means to take care of the uh, funeral expenses. But when you lose a close family member like that, you begin to think about like your own situation, right? And what you would do if that happens. So um, what, what we did, what me and my siblings did, who were in our early 20s at the time, we asked our mom, well, mom, do you have life insurance? And she was like, no, I don't have any life insurance. And at the time, she and my dad were contractors, and so they didn't have any life insurance on their job, and they also did not have any personal life insurance of their own, okay? And so we decided, you know what? Um, we know that if our parents die, even though we are grown and in our early 20s, we know that if our parents die, we're not gonna be able to take care of the funeral expenses. We knew that. And so we um, had to have a conversation, right? And uh, make a decision about what we were gonna do. And so at the time, the cost of a funeral, the approximate cost was about $6,000. I think it's several thousand dollars more now. But at the time, it was about $6,000 and none of us had that kind of money saved uh, to pay for a funeral, okay? So we didn't want to have to deal with a financial burden on top of a devastating emotional loss. So we decided to go in together and purchase life insurance and purchase policies for my mom and then also uh, my dad. So we bought term life insurance for about $10,000 for my mother. And then shortly after that, we bought $15,000 worth of coverage for my dad, okay? And so I remember uh, we paid the policy quarterly and so every quarter I would reach out to them and I would say, hey, I need your premiums for mom and dad's policy. And so that's what we did. And, and we, like I said, we were young, just out of college, um, just starting our careers. And sometimes it was hard to come up with that premium um, for us. And I can laugh, I can laugh now, but it was really something that was difficult for us. I'm sorry, life is going on around me. So there, there's a lot of noise in the background. My husband is choosing to make quite a bit of noise right now. Okay. <laughs> so um, again, it was a, it was a struggle, um, but we knew that it was the right thing to do. Okay. Because we didn't want on top of everything else, on top of an emotional loss to also have a financial loss. So 
What I want um, for you to do, and I'll tell you the remainder of that story and the outcomes over the next two sessions, okay? But what I would like for you to do is to take some time to think about what would you do if you lost a significant other suddenly? Are you covered or would you struggle? What can you do now to get yourself in a position so that it would not have to be a struggle for you, okay? So those are the questions that I would like for you to begin to ask yourself. All right, well, that's the uh, financial portion up for today. So we're gonna go ahead and go into our affirmations, okay? But again, we're gonna go over it over the next two weeks. We'll have a guest who um, sells insurance and so they'll be able to give you some more information about the different kinds and some suggestions about what you should get. And I'll finish the story about what happened with my brother and my sister and the policies that we had for my parents, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and go into our affirmations. And so let's just take a minute and let's breathe in and release. And let's breathe in and release. So you know I love this time of affirmation because I love to affirm the positive things that are going on in our lives. And so over the last three sessions, what I told you is, because typically I give you three affirmations at a time, but this time I'm giving you, I gave you one affirmation a couple of weeks ago, and I told you we would do that same affirmation for the uh, next three weeks. So this is the third week. And that affirmation simply says, I am worthy. I am worthy. And I've told you guys in the past that that's something that I've struggled with, uh, self-worth and things of that nature. And so what worthy means is having worth, having value, or having merit. And so this is something that you can use to self-affirm yourself by saying, I am worthy. Many of us, of us get into situations and circumstances because we struggle in this area, okay? And so with today being the country's Independence Day, let's celebrate our independence from self-doubt. Let's celebrate our independence from not walking or standing in our value and in our personal self-worth. Remember, one of the affirmations that we've gone over in the past says that I walk in liberty and freedom in every aspect of my life. That includes our finances, but it also includes how we think and affirm ourselves. I am worthy. And today, with it being Independence Day, I also want us to celebrate our independence from the lack of financial education and understanding. Let's be fully informed about our personal finances. And even if, and if you haven't already, let's begin on the journey to financial freedom and independence. And that also includes a conversation about life insurance. Okay, well, that's it for our affirmations. So let's go ahead and go into prayer. God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for the bountiful blessings that you've given us. Lord God, as we celebrate independence, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for independence from the things that keep us bound up, for independence from the things that keep us, Lord God, living in a place less than what your greatest good and intention is for us. Be with your people today. Lord God, I know people are celebrating today. For those who are watching now and for those who may watch later, Lord God, bless them abundantly. And let them ask their se themselves, if they haven't already, what would they do, Lord, in the case of a sudden death? Would they be able to manage it? And so, God, we thank you and we praise you for the gifts. We thank you for the tools that we've been going over for these last 14 weeks about how that we can become financially free. I thank you that we'll continue to walk in those things and the affirmations that we've had thus far, that we will continue to hide them in our hearts so that they will become a part of us, Lord God, and that we will achieve and do all that you have intended for us and reach the financial goals that you have for us.
us as well. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for those of you who are able to be with us today. Again, next week, we'll talk a little bit more about life insurance. Remember, you can also follow the previous episodes on the Katherine Langford uh, YouTube channel. I will put a link in the comments for you. And there you can see the edited videos. And please subscribe today. All right. So tomorrow, please join us at 9.30 a.m. for Sunday, Sunday School with Elder Diane. Then at 11 o'clock a.m. for a worship service for a fresh new word from Pastor Ralph. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, mindfulness with Elder Sarita. And Wednesday night, Bible study with Pastor Alika. Again, if you have any questions or topics that you want to discuss, please put those in the comments and I will make sure that we discuss them on a future segment. I will continue to pray for you. Please also pray for me. See you next week.